All right, so this morning I came out to check on the animals and I wanted to check in my worm bit and I found something that seems to be extraordinary. I put a bucket down to save them, but I want you to check this out. So there's two, but then when I opened up the lid, I find this. A steady migration of these larvae. And it's a big migration. They started on this ramp, oh, and now they started on the other ramp. So at, so that's kind of cool. At first, I thought these were, I thought they were maggots. And I thought we had a maggot infestation. I'm definitely gonna have to feed them more food. That means that they're migrating a little too soon because it should be turning a dark brown to migrate. And I wanna double check them to make sure that they are black soldier fly, so I'll probably keep a few of them just to make sure they turn into black soldier fly. Get Set the bucket down on the ground and the dog started eating it. Like she doesn't get enough food already. Fat dog. All right, let me feed the chickens and then today we're off to the Gill Manor swap meet, which is now just called swap meet. But evidently it's this huge deal where you can get everything from eggs to animals to equipment to crafts, everything having to do with a farm. So we're gonna go check that out. All right, so we're here at the swap meet, and I mean, there is everything here. People have all kinds of stuff, stuff I've never even seen before. And it's pretty cool, so we're just gonna spend some time walking around here and checking everything out. These big chicken waters. And that is it. That is the swap meet. It is obviously it's huge. I don't know how many acres it is, how much stuff is there. We walked everywhere. And so um, looked at everything. We came with the idea of not buying anything. And we're actually walking away, not buying anything. <laughs> because this year we were good. We just didn't know what we wanted. Um, if we wanted something, we just wanted to come to Swap Meet to see if it was something that maybe next time, I think I think that's in May and September is when they do the two Swap Meets. So I think that's what we're gonna do, is keep in mind what we saw here and maybe get something if we need it. They have goats and rabbits and they have chickens anywhere from this big to huge monster mama ones. So, um, peacocks. yeah, peacocks, ducks, guinea. guinea. Now I've heard, that, I've heard that guinea is really good for getting rid of ticks. And um, I got just about everything. So lots of craft stuff, lots of just everything having to do with farm feed, all kinds of stuff. Anyway, so that was a pretty cool thing to do. But next year or next time, we'll see if we actually buy anything. Well, be prepared. Like, I want to get some more chickens, but we aren't set up right now to integrate them. And we've only had ours for a year. But next year will be time to mix up the crop a little bit. This year in our garden, we decided to go smaller. I know a lot of homesteaders out there saying, if you really want to be self-supportive and self-sufficient, you need to get a bigger garden. Well, the problem is, is when we got a bigger garden, we're taking care of the animals. I'm running a secondary YouTube channel about cycling. 
We're also working full time and so it's really hard to come out every day and take care of the garden, um, a large garden, in the time that it needs. I mean, you're, you're, you're putting in a lot of time for a garden as it is and it just, we found that for us, having a large garden wasn't really what we needed, not yet. Um, we will probably get to the point where we're going to be more sufficient, more self-sufficient and the, and the garden will grow, but for now, we're just going to put in a few things, things that we know we like to eat, for one. We're not going to worry about making it just super big. So what we're doing today is we've moved the garden. As you see, we're not over near the chicken yard anymore. The chickens have taken over what used to be the garden. Last year, half of the chicken yard was a garden. So we moved it over here to this side. It's outside of the fence from the dog, so the dog is not going to be running through the garden because our particular dog has no concept of what the garden is or to stay off of it or stay away from it. She'll just plow through the plants and she doesn't even care. And so we don't want her in it. So the only thing we'll have to watch for probably is rabbits. We do have some rabbits that live under our house over there or under our shed or near our shed. So we're only gonna go with cucumbers. We've got three or four different kinds of peppers, okra. I personally don't like okra, but my wife loves it. The ELB loves it, so we're gonna put in okra. We're gonna put in some zucchini and then a couple of different varieties of tomato. And that's pretty much it. We also have some onions, carrots, lettuce, basil, and chives over in our raised bed garden that's right by the chicken coop. If you recall, I put that, put that bed together in just like an hour or so with some leftover materials I had from around the house. This year I took out about half of the, half of the dirt, the, the filling that was in there because it was all mulch and I added actual soil, garden soil, and so hopefully all of those plants over there will actually grow this year. As you can see, we've also put down the, uh, the woven weed fabric, which is fantastic stuff. I'm reusing stuff from last year. If you get it, you wanna make sure you get the right stuff. This is called woven weed fabric. So what I've done on the cucumbers is I've made kind of like, almost like a miniature A-frame, so they can grow up the trellis and we can get the cucumbers from either side, hopefully. Um, we'll see how well this works out. I'm gonna stake down, stake down the outside here, and I've already staked down this side with just the, the staples that hold down the weed fabric. best way to do it is to let someone else do it. Already has a bug on it. All right, so we're standing, standing out here planting the garden, getting all the final bits done. As you can see, we've got everything staked. We've got all the plants in, we were doing that. And I was just starting to clean up tools and things like that, the coolest thing happened. I heard the sound of a dove behind me, the little cooing, but it wasn't cooing normally. And so I turned to look up and I heard some flapping and a hawk had come down and snatched it. I don't know if he snatched it off the ground or if he snatched it out of the air. But I looked up just in time to see him flying off through these trees right here, through our driveway. He just kind of went like that and then turned down the driveway. And you could see feathers falling. And I was like, that would have been really something cool to see was the hawk snatch a, a dove right from over here. We have a couple of doves that come and eat from our bird feeders quite a bit and I guess now we'll only have one. I don't know. Hey, the laws of nature and the predator won this time. Normally, um, they would be after our chickens, which is why we have the netting over there. And on a day like this, it's nice and calm. There's not a lot of noise that's going on. We didn't even hear him swoop in. Don't even know where he came from. I do know where he went. He went down the driveway, but 
it was pretty cool to see. I wish I would have had the camera running to, to try and catch it, but oh well. W watch National Geographic for that stuff. Yeah, it would have been cool. All right, so there you go. Garden's in and planted. We're gonna put some water on it, get all the plants back up to speed, and pray that the Lord will bless the garden. So that's it for today. Adventures at the swap meet, adventures in the garden. I wish I would have been filming for that hawk. That would have been really cool. So thanks for watching. And as we get some more stuff, we'll see what happens. All right, till next time. Cheers.